Good morning, folks. Welcome to That's My Farm. I'm Jim Shroy, your host, and we're in luck because we're in Pottawatomie County, just on the east side of Wamego, Kansas. And, you know, a lot of people collect things. They collect coins, they collect stamps, they collect baseball cards. But our next guest collects tractors, old tractors, and lots of them. You're going to want to see this. So, hang around. We got to take a break, and we'll start this show when we get back. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. That's My Farm is brought to you in part by Tall Grass Commodities. Big enough to serve, small enough to care. Good morning, folks. Welcome to That's My Farm. I'm Jim Shroy, your host, and we're in luck because we're in Wamego, Kansas, and we're speaking with Jim Meinhart in his tractor museum. And Jim, you've got a bunch of tractors here, and there are some beauties. And so, before we start talking about individual tractors and some of your favorites, tell us a little bit on how you got started. Well, I grew up in Paxico, Kansas, uh -huh. uh, in the farm machinery business with my dad. Um, he started about 1953. Um, I worked for him until uh, about 1967, okay. and then I moved to Wilmington and started a dealership here. Um, been selling for almost 50 years and we started out with Alice Chalmers and uh, took on New Holland and several other lines uh -huh. and that's what we've been selling since plus adding some other lines. But uh, when you first started mm -hmm. though this dealership was uh, Minneapolis Molines? Uh, there was actually Minneapolis Moline tractor sitting on a lot but we didn't pick up that dealership. Okay. Uh, so we started out with basically Alice Chalmers and New Holland. Uh -huh. We started here, I actually started in uh, a small building with with five people and mm -hmm. uh, today we have nine stores and about 150 people um, the antique deal kind of came on um, a guy came in one day and wanted to trade me a 1909 international truck <clears throat> on a small combine I told him no he came back and I finally gave in that may have started the whole process <laughs> uh, became an antique tractor junkie at that point that right. was a, you started with the hard stuff in 1909 huh yeah well that's the, yeah the 1909 truck <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. and since then most of the stuff we have here we've traded for mm -hmm. uh, we have bought a few items uh, I've, I've bought some items from a dealers or, and also from farmers and it just kind of grew from there um, got kind of stored everywhere and then we finally built this building and uh, and kind of had the dreams of having a museum. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what we do today. We have old old machinery. Hate to see it go to the salvage yard. Right. So right. we're trying to save that image for the farmers of the past. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're trying to preserve this equipment. Mm -hmm. So we have a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. uh, the stuff inside our building, our museum, is most of that's not for sale. But we have equipment outside that we are, mm -hmm. that is for sale. Right. Again, you've got a lot of tractors here. They all start, and how, and how do you maintain them? Well, everything in the museum will run. Mm -hmm. it, it'll take a little coaxing. To get <laughs> I bet. Yeah, but everything did run when we brought, brought it in here, and, it uh -huh. wouldn't, and uh, so we try to keep those tractors up and cars, uh -huh. keep them so they're up in shape. Uh, I have a guy that helps me full time, um, inside and outside the building, on different equipment. And we just do the best we can in between everything else we do. Uh, well, some of these tractors here look like they just came off the factory floor, or maybe better than they came off the factory floor. I mean, these, these are immaculate. The, the paint jobs might be better than uh -huh. the factory job. Uh -huh. uh, we, we were lucky to find a gentleman that would rebuild them for us, and he's done that for several years now. And so mm -hmm. we just do one at a time and keep, keep fixing them up. Oh, man, this is wonderful. Jim, we got to take a break. Okay. Hang on here. Okay. Folks, don't go away. We'll be right back after these words from our sponsors. Tallgrass Commodities offers producers bulk commodities at a reasonable price with reliable service throughout the whole Midwest. To find out more about Tallgrass Commodities, visit tallgrass.us or call 785-494-8484. When your living depends on agriculture, you can depend on KFRM 550 AM. If you're in the southwest three-fourths of Kansas or the northern half of Oklahoma, catch us at 550 AM on the radio dial. But if that isn't you, listen on your cell phone at TuneIn Radio or on your computer at KFRM.com. We promise to keep you informed, entertained, and company as you go through your day. KFRM 550 AM, the voice of the plains. We would like to join your management team. Support Kansas agriculture education with an AgriTag. 
AgriTags are available anytime at your county treasurer. They look great on cars and trucks. For more information, go online to ksagclassroom.org. Buying a car shouldn't be this hard. And at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego, it isn't. It's actually awesome. Whether you want a new or used car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. Even if you want to custom order a new car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. See Toby's team at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego. We're awesome. That's My Farm is brought to you in part by Tall Grass Commodities. Big enough to serve, small enough to care. Welcome back to That's My Farm. I'm Jim Schroyer and Jim Meinhart here at Wamego is still with us. And Jim, this is one of your first endeavors, wasn't it? The 1909 International? That's, Tell us a little bit about it. That's correct. Uh, this is the one I mentioned that um, the guy came down and wanted to trade it to me and I told him no. Didn't really have enough money to buy it or trade for it. Came back 30 days later and talked me into trade. <laughs> Twisted little, your arm, huh? little combine. We've kept it shedded for every, all the time. We've had it in parades. Uh -huh. It runs good, and uh, at my youngest son actually did over in the parade a few years ago. Yeah, I see a, I see a, I see a picture right yeah. here. Yeah. Is that, is that your? Yep, must was youngest son and his wife and uh -huh. little daughter. Uh, well, I bet that everybody kind of oozes and awes yeah. at that. Yeah. <laughs> I'll yep. be darned. It's uh, supposedly hauled uh, agricultural products from Hanover, Kansas to Lincoln, Nebraska. Oh, it's hard rubber tires, uh -huh. a little two-cylinder engine, so it's uh -huh. kind of unique. Uh-huh. I'll be dang. I'll be dang. Well, let's go over here and talk about these uh, Fords. Okay. What we've done here is uh, uh, we are a Ford New Holland dealer uh, and uh, always liked the little Ford tractors. So what we did, we found three different ones, uh, one a standard, one with a six-cylinder, and one with a V8 in it. The big one over there. Yep. Mm -hmm. And uh, we rebuilt them. and. Everybody relates to a little Ford tractor. So oh, oh yeah, I, I raked with uh, yeah. raked hay with these things. Most people have. Uh -huh. So we fixed those all up and repainted them. Uh -huh. And uh, it's everybody likes to look at them. They so like the tractors. what's the year on this one? This would be a '52. '52. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. One of the last ones made. Uh huh. Boy, it's a beauty. Okay. And, uh, but they all run and everything's good on them. This is a six-cylinder here. Uh huh. Uh, actually, a truck engine they put in them. Uh, the kit was actually made down in uh, southeast Kansas to do it. Oh, really? A uh, company by the name of Funk, if you N K, I believe it is. Mm -hmm. And uh, they still uh, make uh, attachments and transmissions for people today. Oh, to but, to rebuild them or? Well, for the new tractors. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Okay. And the next one is a Ford Ferguson. Um, it's a V8, and it's the same way it's been retrofitted. Uh, the engine has. Uh -huh. uh, this tractor actually came from Colorado, and uh, a guy to rebuild it and had it for sale. It's one of them we bought. Okay, what year? What? So that's a '52, uh, the six-cylinder. What year is that? That's actually older. That would be uh, probably about a '47. Uh huh. And this one here is a Ford Ferguson. Uh, uh -huh. I would say it's probably uh, early '50s also. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Boy, these are nice. These are nice. Yep. So they all run, run good. Okay. And, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, well, uh, well, what's the what's this little beauty over here? Well, this is a, a LaSalle or LaSalle. Mm -hmm. It's 1940. It's original, original paint. It's got a flathead V8 in it. I actually traded a uh, boring bar, which is a piece of uh, machine shop equipment, for you and up from a guy, uh -huh. and uh, uh, it's it's in excellent shape, and we just just one of the one of my favorites okay. for sure. Jim, we got to take another okay. break here. Okay. <laughs> Folks, stay with us. We'll be right back after these words from our sponsors. Soil is the life of a farm, and for 25 years, SureCrop Liquid Crop Nutrition has helped growers produce abundant quality crops while preserving and improving the soils they steward. SureCrop offers complete soil and plant analysis with cropping recommendations, delivery direct to your on-farm storage, and quality crop nutrition custom blended for your field. Choose SureCrop for the assurance of excellence for your soil. Call today or visit their website for more information. Visit our picturesque town on the Santa Fe Trail for the Council Grove Fall Festival featuring the Voices of the Wind People pageant on the banks of the Neosho River, September 16 and 17. 
healthy cows start with the new Hired Hand Automatic Livestock Sprayer. Rancher invented to provide an efficient alternative to pour-on and injectable parasite management systems. The portable design allows cattle to treat themselves head to hoof. Strategic device placement with pass-through activation technology takes the stress out of parasite treatment for cattle and the rancher, leaving more time to tend to other vital tasks on the farm. To learn more, visit cowsprayer.com. The new hired hand makes healthy cows easy. That's My Farm is brought to you in part by Tall Grass Commodities. Big enough to serve, small enough to care. Welcome back to That's My Farm. I'm Jim Schroyer. With us we have Jim Meinhart in the Tractor Museum. Jim, I'm looking around here. You've got little model tractors. You've got everything. Signs. Uh, tell us a little bit about this mobile sign above us. Well, it's always been dear to my heart. My dad was a, a mobile distributor in Paxico for 50 years. Uh -huh. He didn't really have this sign, but uh -huh. I found it and uh, had it redone. Um, that's, mobile's always been my favorite brand, and so we got it fixed up and always have it lit up for the museum. Well, now, I got to tell you, my dad was a Texaco dealer, and mm -hmm. Texaco was always my favorite brand, so the big star, <laughs> yep. the big star was mine. Yeah. So it, that, that's, that's impressive. That's impressive. It got a Ford sign over here. Yes, the Ford sign came. We used to have a Ford car dealer in town. It's, mm -hmm. it's gone now, but uh, it was on the front of the building, and the guy that owned it, uh, I asked him if he was going to sell it, and he said, I'll give it to you, but we had to rebuild it mm -hmm. and everything. And then the Chevrolet sign up above here came from a Chevrolet dealer we had downtown. Here, here in Wemigo. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've got a couple... Got an Oldsmobile sign and a couple others that came from that And you have place. some other signs in the back here right. on, the, on the ground. Yep. They, these, are, these are wonderful. Mm -hmm. Just uh, kind of collect whatever comes along, and, and that's why we have some oil cans and that kind of Tell us a little bit about this uh, pump here. Well, that that's also didn't come from my dad's business. But it did or did not? Did not. Did not. Uh, actually, a farmer had that on his property, and uh, I asked him about it one day, and uh, I think we traded for that on something. I'm not sure what. Both, mm -hmm. both these signs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you have a and you have a Skelly you know, from Tulsa, Oklahoma, yeah. uh, pumped back there in the back. Uh -huh. It is again uh, off of a farmers. Yes, yep. farmers Both farm. of them came from farmers' places. Uh -huh. so. I'll be so that's kind of how we collect it, find that stuff, and and today we have people bring stuff in that, you know, some of they even just give it to us. You know, they don't want it to go to the junk. Right, yet. exactly. So, so it's preserved here. Yep. That's mm -hmm. great. Yeah. Trying to preserve the past is okay. what we're trying to do. Sure, I think you're doing a good job. <laughs> wow, thank you. We got got from uh, toy tractors like you'd buy at our our stores mm -hmm. uh, to the old tractors to uh, brand new ones. Mm -hmm. So we go from about 20 horsepower mm -hmm. on the real tractors to about 600 horsepower today. In, in the museum. Well, actually, in the museum and our business. Uh, right, the the right. big ones are in the big business. Right. So. right. And we just try to collect like the pedal tractors and um, kind of anything we we see that's old. And uh -huh. Try to t take care of it. Okay, I'm not ready for the museum yet, although my kids think so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think my kids think the same. <laughs> but it's it's been a fun fun project. Okay, so, yeah. hey, we got to take a break. Okay. Okay. And, uh, we want to talk about these yeah. big tractors okay. in the back here. Okay. Folks, stay with us. We'll be right back after these words from our sponsors. The new Better Horses Network is worldwide. Presented by Lucas Oil. Featuring worldwide radio and TV with iconic hosts like Al Dunning, Sharon Camarillo, Ernie Rodina, Lindy Birch, and Craig Cameron. With American Cowboy, Horse and Rider, Brushy Creek, Cavenders, and Ride TV. Worldwide radio and TV. The all new Better Horses Network. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. Next time you see a beautiful field of corn, reach out and thank the farmers who work tirelessly to raise corn for livestock feed, renewable fuels, and exports to feed a growing world population. The farmers on the Kansas Corn Commission work for Kansas Corn with grower-funded checkoff dollars that support foreign and domestic market development, research, promotion, and education to expand opportunities for Kansas farmers. To learn more, visit kscorn.com. That's My Farm is brought to you in part by Tall Grass Commodities, big enough to serve, small enough to care. 
Welcome back to That's My Farm. I'm Jim Schroyer. Jim Meinhardt is with us at the museum here in, uh, in Wamego. Jim, I know you probably get this question a lot, and I'll be another one to ask it. I, you've got to have some favorites of the, all your tractors in here. So mm -hmm. I won't ask you the f top one, so <laughs> maybe give me the top five. Okay. Well, which, what are your top, favorite top five tractors? You well, have? two of them are behind us here. The first one's a D17 Alice Chalmers. It was on our showroom floor when he purchased the business. Okay. And uh, it's one of three that was sitting on the floor. We were able to buy it back and fix it up. Uh -huh. And that's about a 1967 model. Uh -huh. And uh, the D21 uh, is one we traded for and fixed up. And they're real popular in tractor pulling. Uh, had a lot of power. And that's a that's a big tractor. What's big, the horsepower on it? About 135 horsepower. Oh. We have, but they they can run them up to a couple hundred horsepower. And easy. you say they're used a lot for uh, tractor pulling. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, I'll yeah. be darned. Yeah. Okay. Well, what about the 17 here, D17? Well, the D17 was sold and new. Uh, the guy kept it until he actually passed away and had a sale, and we bought it back from mm -hmm. the family. Mm -hmm. And this is pretty pretty special since it was one of the first tractors we ever sold. So. Mm -hmm. it's one, it came with the business, and, okay. and, you, and you're able to buy it back. Right. I'll, I'll be right. darned. Yeah. So it's kind of special. So you have a lot, maybe a lot of the tractors you have, you actually sold and then and then got back? Oh, probably maybe 20% of them, mm -hmm. the tractors we sold new, and one way or another we traded back for them and everything. Mm -hmm. most, most of what we have here we've traded for, uh, very few we've purchased, but then we just kind of hold on to them. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. It's kind of... It's kind of fun because people actually come in and want to know where their grandpa's tractor was. Or, they want to see yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. It is, it's a lot of fun. A lot of, they reminisce on the, on the old history. So. Okay, I bet, yeah. I bet. The tractor right here beside us, um, nothing special except it's a tractor with a bail loader and it's all complete. And that's something we, huh. we can't find because most of them have been, <clears throat> excuse me, salvaged, salvaged out or, or taken off and never put back on and parts get lost. So we like to to find those kind of units, which we getting harder to find every day. Really. Right, yeah, that, this, that, that's an impressive little thing. I hauled lots of hay without, without yeah, those. I did too. <laughs> <laughs> they were a great invention. That's right, that's right, you bet. But it's just kind of fun to, to talk to people and show them everything about it. So, yeah. yeah. Well, back to the Alice Chalmers tractors. We've got about one of every size made, and that's something we've tried to get a, is a full line of collection probably from the um, 40s on up to uh, about 1970 mm -hmm. in that range. Uh, and they're on the back wall back here, right? Right, mm -hmm. okay. on the back wall. Okay, this tractor here is an F-20 farm all. Uh, it belonged to my father-in-law and his brother, and they farmed with this tractor for many years. Uh, we got it out of the shed kind of in pieces and rebuilt it, and we've had it in parades. Uh, it farmed a lot of land in its, in its time. And uh, also have a smaller Alice Chalmers that's kind of special. We got to take a break. Okay. Folks, we have to take a break, so stay with us. We'll be right back after these words from our sponsors. Watch Ag AM in Kansas online at agamincansas.com. I had this horse, it was a good horse, except when the wind was blowing above 30 mile an hour. Wind was blowing about 35, 40, and I saddled him up, rode him out to the end of the lane, and I thought, well, he's doing pretty good. And about six jumps later, I was laying on the ground and thinking, boy, my shoulder sure hurt. I kept waiting and it, it didn't get better. And so I went to an orthopedic surgeon and that showed that I had torn rotator cuff. And said, well, I have to do surgery. And I, I farm and ranch by myself. This is not gonna work out very well. I'd been sleeping in my recliner for about two and a half years because it hurt too much to sleep in bed on my side. And, I'd heard about Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center on the radio. Got down there at 8 o'clock in the morning, and by 11.30 the procedure was all over. They just took some fat out of my side here and spun that down for about 45 minutes, and then injected it in my shoulders, and I was on my way. It's something you don't hear about, but I thought it was worth a try, and, and I'm really pleased. It's, it's really worked out well for me. Grain sorghum is one of the most important cereal crops worldwide and Kansas leads the nation in its production. Over the years, sorghum has been either exported, used in animal feed domestically, or for other industrial uses. Recently, its use in the ethanol market has seen tremendous growth, with 30% of domestic sorghum typically going to ethanol production. 
Kansas Grain Sorghum is committed to sorghum research, market development, and education. Learn more at ksgrainsorghum.org. We do business with Blueville because of the quality of their work. It is excellent quality and because they make a commitment to their customers. We enjoy the benefits of hiring a good company to help us maintain this home. We will always do business with Blueville. We have for many, many years, and there's no reason for us to look for any other service. That's My Farm is brought to you in part by Tall Grass Commodities, big enough to serve, small enough to care. Welcome back to That's My Farm. I'm Jim Schroyer. Jim Meinhardt from Omigo is with us in his tractor museum. And Jim, uh, this is the back wall that we were talking about, all the Chal uh, Alice uh, Chalmer tractors. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about them. Well, these tractors are anywhere from 1940s uh, through probably 1960. Mm -hmm. uh, all different sizes. They're gas, diesel, propane, a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. It just kind of put a row of them together that everybody can see them at one time. And, um, you know, the museum, what we've been talking about doing is being open two or three days a week. Uh, at this point, we have it open if you call ahead, and we'll be glad to show it to you. Hope to be more full-time in the future. Uh, as everyone knows, farming's been real good for the last four years. That's changed. A little tough right now. That's changed drastically in the last year. Um, and we were really busy during that time, so the museum kind of got put on hold. and. Uh, so we haven't done a lot with it, but we're kind of getting back with it now. And uh, hope to have it open so people can see it, but we'll, we'll show it to anybody if they call it in. Well, that's good. There's a tractor that's kind of special down on the back wall back mm -hmm. here, uh, or actually the front wall. Well, tell us a little bit about that little thing. Uh, it's a uh, Alice Chalmers WD-45. My dad sold it new uh, to the Polinsky family in Alma, Kansas. And uh, I actually traded back for that tractor with their son mm -hmm. and uh, for a small tractor to keep the farmstead up. Uh, they've quit farming, but uh, uh, that one's been a lot of fun because the gentleman has been over to see it. And, and uh, he's passed away since then, but he, he loved to see that tractor. Sure, I understand. Now, one of my favorites is, is, is uh, that Oliver 77 over mm -hmm. on the other, on the west wall over there. And that's kind of one of my favorites <laughs> in there. Tell us a little bit about that one. Well, uh, <clears throat> I actually really always liked the sound of an Oliver tractor. They ran smooth, and there was a lot of them around this area. Uh, a lot of the Oliver owners, when they bought Oliver, they usually stayed with them until they basically went out of business. A lot of loyalty then, huh? Right. Just kind of a, a real nice looking, smooth running tractor. Mm -hmm. We also collect op operator's manuals. Uh, we have them here beside us here. We're trying to get them all taken care of. Some of those we'll have for sale along with other equipment, but... Um, and you have a, a bookcase on the, on the north wall here right. of, of the manuals as well. Yep. Yeah, we just kind of try to get them lined out, and uh, some people want them, and it's, you know, some of them have names in them yet who had the equipment and everything, so they're kind of interesting. Yeah, that's, that is interesting. What I think I like the most of the, bid of the deal is that you hear the stories from the older people uh -huh. on how tough things were and how they used to use them and everything. It's a lot of fun. i gotta, I got to ask you. Uh, what does your wife say about your your habit? Your your <laughs> habit. I call it a good habit. Well, what does your wife say about your bad habit of collecting? Well, she she sh shakes her head quite a bit. <laughs> um, but you know, I've been in this business all my life. Uh -huh. My wife is a farm gal, so she, she understands. She, she understands. understands. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, that's 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 yeah. a good thing yeah. to have. Understanding wife there. I understand. Uh, we've kind of done this also to help draw people to our dealer, our our main dealership, Can Equip. Right. And. Uh, people drive through this lot you can usually come down here about any time of the day sometimes late in the evening somebody be driving around mm -hmm. uh, people bring their kids out here to set on the old equipment uh -huh. and uh, it's it's just fun to watch them and every weekend uh, you know somebody drives through and then on monday i'll get a call you uh -huh. know we'll know if, if that machine's for sale how much i want for it yeah so that's been a lot of fun too so. jim i really appreciate you taking time and showing us your museum your thank old you. tractor museum thank you Folks, thank you for being with us, and don't forget, next week about this same time, we'll have another issue of That's My Farm. See you then. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com.